Hey Mavericks, Ashley here, back with another episode of the Maverick Mompreneur podcast. I had a great conversation with a client of mine and it inspired this episode. We are gonna be talking about how to show up powerfully and confidently and authentically like a boss when you haven't created quote unquote success yet. So you're not a top earner. You haven't made whatever amount of money per month that you have defined as successful or that you've allowed people around you to define as successful. How do you show up and really boss up your brand without having that nagging sense of being an imposter. What do you build your success story on? How do you do that when you are starting at a smaller place than you will eventually build up to? Because obviously every single person that you see who's created success, they started small too. So I'm gonna share with you some of the keys to building with confidence and authenticity from the get-go, getting started, doing the dang thing, even when you haven't yet created the success that you eventually eventually will if you start showing up powerfully. Okay, are you ready? Hey mama, I'm Ashley and this is the Maverick Mompreneur podcast where you're free and encouraged to own your desire to create and scale an impactful, discoverable online brand and business in the midst of motherhood. A business that's aligned with your mission, lifestyle desires, personality, and zone of genius without wasting your time on the hustle and grind hamster wheel that is social media. Can I get an amen? Sis, you are a maverick, an original, willing to stand out in your authenticity, defy expectations, and do life and business outside the box. In our world, if it's not aligned with who we are, it's a hard pass or a brave pivot. So if you're here for the powerful identity shift and transformation from boss babe or boss mom to aligned CEO, building a one of a kind, influential, hustle-free online business, that will produce long-term impact and multiple streams of income through SEO, affiliate marketing, and courses while building yourself in the process. Well, pop in those AirPods, grab that cup of coffee or a glass of wine, and let's get growing. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that the waitlist is officially closed for Social Seller to CEO Academy. So at this point, set your alarm clock for February 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific because that is when enrollment is going to open up to everyone. If there are any spots left from the waitlist, you could snag a spot, but you want to make sure that you are ready to rock. The links will be live on the social seller to CEO academy.com page where you can snag a spot, either the one-on-one experience. If you would rather work through creating systems and offers with me one-on-one, I do have two of those spots available. Or if you would like a seat in the group program, which by the way, you also get as part of the one-on-one experience. This is a 12 week program where we are going to build out systems for marketing, sales, automation, communication within your existing business that you can also utilize for any other stream of revenue that you have or will add to your brand. And then the second part, the CEO portion, creating exceptional offers, we are going to create and create a launch plan for your first paid offer, whether that's a digital course, a group program, a coaching offer, or a membership. It's going to be absolutely fire. This program opens only two times per year for enrollment with the price increasing every single time. So if now is the time for you, make sure that you set your alarm for February 2nd so that you can snag one of those spots that remains after the wait list gets priority. Okay, now let's for real, for real, get into it. So I think firstly, defining what success means to you is so critical to this whole conversation, at least in my experience and in my opinion. A lot of times we have this arbitrary definition of what success means, and we don't even check it against what success actually means to us or feels like to us. I read this quote, ironically, as I was downloading a design that I was doing for a reel because I've been doing reels lately. I'm very proud of myself. I'm doing them my way. I 
and actually enjoying it. When you're downloading a design from Canva, it will give a quote while you're waiting, which is kind of nice. And it actually really went along with this theme. And it was success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. And that's a quote by Maya Angelou and it's her definition of success. And I really like it, I might adopt it. What does success mean to you? If success only means to you a particular dollar amount, so I'm not a top ranking leader, or I don't make 10,000 per month, I don't make consistent 20K months, whatever it might be. If it's only a number and that's what you have as your definition of success, I can totally see how it would be difficult to show up in this powerful way when you haven't created that yet. But the one thing that I know is true is that you will never create financial success if you don't show up in the way that someone with financial success would especially as a personal brand. This is something I've really thought about this past year. I was chatting with my Facebook community, Elevate Academy, the other day about this very thing when my video got cut off and it's not saved, so it's not there. I can't direct you to look at it, but I'll recap. This past year was the first year that I really had completely stopped building in social selling because I wanted to align myself with my brand and what it is that I'm doing here as far as teaching women in social selling, in the influencer space, personal brands, how to monetize their personal brands and market their personal brands. And I wanted that not to be company or industry specific. So I really transitioned away from my social selling business, shut down my funnel for sponsoring. I still have my sales funnels and continue to bring in new customers every single week, but that's just focusing on my production and not on leadership because I'm not able to be the kind of leader that most people would expect or deserve or want that would be coming on board. And so I'm no longer doing that long story short, but this was the first year where I believe it was about 82% and when I say this year, I mean this coming up tax year, really. So 2022, about 82% of my income was really from my brand, my offers. And that's different than it has been for the past two years of this coaching business that I have because a larger percentage was coming from social selling and residual income from my team. So I remember thinking at certain points throughout this year that, oh gosh, you know, my income is lower than it was the previous two years. And I really had to think about, okay, well, why is that an issue? Why is it an issue if my income doesn't grow year over year, particularly in a year of transition? And I realized that I too got caught up in the trap of feeling like success means this linear trajectory upward of income. But that's not actually what success means to me. Success to me means that I feel good about what it is that I'm doing. Success means to me that I am happy with my work-life balance. I have a business I'm obsessed with. I work with clients I love and I have time for what matters most. And all of those things are still very much true. And I actually came pretty dang close to matching what I made the year before, even in a year of transition. And so I, if anything, realized I should feel proud of that and stick with my definition of success. And so that's why I wanted to talk to you today about defining what success means to you versus borrowing from some other arbitrary number someone else puts out there. Because when someone comes across your brand, the things that are going to draw them to you, the reason they're going to buy from you, take your recommendation for an affiliate product, join you in your business opportunity, become your client, are not dollar signs. It's not how much money you make. There's plenty of people that you can think of that make the same amount of money as any other person in the online space, but you don't choose to vibe with them, to purchase from them because you are not a match to them. You're not attracted to them. Think about someone who you have bought from online. Guaranteed, it's not because of the income that they made. It was something about their personal qualities, the qualities inside. It's completely aside from how much they make. Sure, 
they may be successful and that could be attractive, but you certainly wouldn't be partnered with them. You wouldn't purchase from them. You wouldn't have anything to do with them if they didn't have these other very much more important qualities that are aspirational and inspirational to you. So for yourself, what is it that you offer? What do people compliment you on, whether it's in your work or your personal life? What do people come to you for? What is it that is your draw? For example, I was talking to this client of mine and she is a genuinely authentic, happy person. She's on this growth path that's so amazing and it's really magnetic. Her ability to connect with other people is amazing, to listen, to empathize, all these beautiful qualities. You build your success on those things and the money will come, the success financially will come, but you build your success story on the things that are invaluable, the qualities that you have developed as a human being because of what it is that you do, who it is that you are. Those things are so much more powerful and attractive to people who are potentially wanting to buy from or work with you than anything else. So if you haven't created financial success yet, it's so imperative. And even if you have, it's so imperative to figure out what it is that you're building your success story on because everybody starts from zero. Everybody starts small. The people that you see making the most money in the online space, they started small too. They showed up powerfully and they just kept the ball rolling. They kept the momentum going. They continued to show up I'm sure you've heard people say before, I know one of my principals that I used to work for, she had a poster on her wall with all these different mottos. And one of her mottos was dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have. And it's really similar to how we need to show up. So show up as if you had the success that you will create that you don't have yet. That person, that successful woman, that woman who is just absolutely crushing it and has this dream business, making her dream impact and income an absolute reality, she is you. It just hasn't happened yet. So you really have to channel that person within you and move like her, but now. Think about it. What moves would she make? What would she be doing on a daily basis? How would she be caring for herself? How would she be speaking to herself? Who would she be around? What materials would she be consuming or not consuming? How would she be eating? What would she be dressing like? What would be the type of content that she would put out and start behaving as her now really step further and further into that person. And that's going to be the time collapse. So I want you to base the way that you show up on the value that you have as a human, the specific qualities that are inherent in you, that money can't buy, that no amount of financial success can bring forth, the things that are already there and the ways that you can create impact and lead with those things. And then the success and the income part will follow that. But if you never show up as the most powerful, authentic, awesome, quirky version of you, then that part's not going to come. And if it does, it's gonna take a lot longer and it's not gonna feel nearly as good. So I know that place where you're just thinking, ah, I'm not worthy. Who am I to create my own offers? Who am I to try and systematize my social selling business? I haven't even made, you know, 10 sales in a month or whatever arbitrary things you set as standards in order to take that next boss level step. Who am I to have a website? Who am I to start email marketing and building an email list. If you never start, those things will never exist. If you never show up like you're taking your business seriously and like you have a job to do here, then you won't create that success that you're feeling like you need to have in order to get started. I know this is a little bit convoluted and it's so simple, yet I know it's difficult. I know imposter syndrome creeps in when we don't have this standard that we've set in our minds, but I promise you the key to creating anything that you want is deciding to make it happen and showing up and not quitting and not getting down on yourself, not thinking that you're less than or that you can't do this. 
It's moving forward as if you know it's already going to happen. It's a matter of time and effort and taking the action steps to make it happen. But my challenge for you this week is to sit down and journal it out and write down what success actually means to you and not including any particular dollar amount. What does success feel like? Because it's so easy to fall into this trap of seeing other people make money online and we see it all around us and we think we are not as fill in the blank as so and so because we're not making as much money but what's in your bank account what's in your stripe account what's in your paypal account the size of your commission checks does not determine your value that you bring to the marketplace if you want to scale your business if you want to scale your brand there are ways to do that but there are also other things to consider so maybe you see someone who's a million dollar earner but at what cost to borrow from notorious big mo money mo problems not necessarily problems but for a certain type of person more money could mean more problems for example for me to be a million dollar business that sounds great but when i really think about what that would entail a larger team I don't want to have a larger team. I want to make money to cover my bills doing work that I absolutely love and not have to worry about money. I'm not like a luxury brand Louis Vuitton bag type of person. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that is not what makes me feel successful. I would rather work with Jody and have our team of two and have a really, really good balance of work and life and time with Taylor and time to create and not feel overwhelmed. I love that. And however much money I can make with that framework, I am here for. Slow and steady growth and or staying where I'm at, which is a great place to be too. That still feels successful. Whereas I could look around at what other coaches are making and charging and think, oh my gosh, I'm I'm not as good as them or people aren't going to think I'm as good as them. But I know that my people who vibe with me, who want to work with me as a student of my program or a client one-on-one, they are attracted to the things in me that have nothing to do with how much money I make. They're looking at the business model, the way that I've created the success that I have, the way that I treat myself, the way that I treat other people, the vibes, if you will. So I want you to remember that and think about someone who inspires you, whether that's me, whether that's another coach, whether that's someone else in a different industry, what is it about them that inspires you? And write those things down too, because typically the qualities that you see in someone else that you love and that inspire you so much, they're usually things that you already have within you and that are ready to just be called forth. And that is the cool thing about being a leader in the online space. That's part of your job. That's part of my job is to call forth greatness in other people by bringing it out in ourselves and by putting ourselves out there. The happy byproduct of that is you can make money by being yourself as a personal brand. Essentially, yes, you have to have good offers. Yes, you have to have ways to create revenue and monetize your personal brand. But at the end of the day, the thing that distinguishes a successful personal brand from someone who isn't is who they are, who they are being and who they're becoming. So I hope that encourages you to put yourself out there, to launch that offer, to create that website, to start the podcast, to do those next level things that you're sitting on and waiting on until you create success. Do them now and that's how you're going to create success. You're going to create momentum. You're going to create excitement and new life in your business and what you're doing and you're going to feel like so much more of a boss by making those next level moves before you feel like you're ready. I'm doing ready in air quotes. So anyway, I hope this episode was helpful to you. If it was the best way that you can help my message for this podcast to get to other people and the biggest thank you that I can receive from you as a podcast listener, if you love this, is to share this content. So take a screenshot, post it in your stories, tag me. I super appreciate all of you who do that every single week. Love you guys and I'll talk to you very soon.